young man came last night and I had a chance to talk with him uh, last night. He mentioned to me uh, some things and, and it was related to the fact, uh, does the church matter? And regardless of the fact, does the church really matter? Does it really matter uh, what church a person belongs to? And, and I can answer that many, many ways because there's only one church. Uh, Paul, Paul made that clear in the book of Ephesians. Paul says that there is only one church. Uh, we talked about that, but Paul, Ephesians 4, 4, there's only one body. Ephesians 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse number 6, where I made the same body, chapter 2, that he talks about, chapter 2, verse 16, that we ought to be reconciled together with God in one body. And then he said in chapter 1, verse 22, 23, that the church is the body. Amen. And so since the church is the body, Ephesians 4, 4, there's only one body that can't be but one church. And when in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, we were all of us in the same body. We were all of us in the same, in the same church. And then we were reconciled to God in one church. And I want you to see this. I want you, I'm going to take you on a journey tonight because I want you to see this. We're going to go into the judgment of God. I want to take you into the judgment of God. And I want to show you, my, my lesson is simple. I want to show you when I take you to the judgment of God, I want you to see at the judgment that the church you're in will make a difference. Yeah. All right, let's go tonight. Let's go tonight. My readers, come on. Come on, brothers. Come on. The Bible says Revelation chapter 20. In the book of Revelation chapter 20. Yeah. Revelation chapter 20. And read me at verse number 11. Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 11. Revelation 20 and verse number 11. Let's watch and see uh, what John the Revelator says there on the Isle of Pax. The Bible says in Revelation 20 and verse number 11, if you have it, watch what the Bible says. And I saw a great white throne. Now, now John says, and I saw a great white throne. Come on. And him that sat on it. And him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. Come on and read. And there was found no place for them. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. Taking us into the judgment. Then and I God. saw the dead, small and great. And they were standing before God. And the books were open. And don't miss this now. Let's not listen tonight. And he said, our church, he says, and the books were open. Don't miss that now. It's book. He said, at the judgment, some books are going to be open. Go to read, sir. And another book. And then he says, there was another book. Now look at what we have. He says, at the judgment, there are going to be books open. But then he says, there's going to be a single, another book. And then he tells us what this book is. Which is the book of life. He says, there's one book that's going to be open. Is the book of life. <laughs> Only two, two things we got to be concerned about. Books. And then he says, there's going to be a book. And I want to watch the Bible say, go to read. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book. Now, now, we're going to be judged. The dead are going to be judged over here. That's right. Don't miss this now. We're going to be judged over here. But then the Bible says there's another book, and I'm going to show you what that book is. I'm going to show you that. I'll give it to you. I'm going to show you this. That this is a book, and I'll give it to you, and I'll come back to it. This is the book of our names. Yeah. And I'm going to show you tonight, your name has to be over here. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if your books are all messed up, yeah. I want you to know your name won't be over here. Yeah. And you got to understand, so how is the judgment going to be? The judgment is going to be very simple. We're going to stand before God, and God is going to look for your name. In the book. Amen. And I'm going to start. I'm going to give you the little tongue and teeth. I'm going to give you a book chapter and verse. Yeah. And the Bible said, Watch the book. Come on, read. And the dead were judged out of those and things. And the dead were judged out of those things. Books that were written in the world. books. Because the Bible said they are judged out according to their works. We're going to be judged according to what we have done. Amen. And let me just help you understand this tonight. Well, because I know some people don't believe there's going to be a judgment, but I stop by here tonight to tell you there's going to be a judgment. Yeah. And it's going to be a judgment. Let me just say something. Let me just deal with that real fast. Because not only there's going to be a judgment, God gave us a guarantee. That's right. I said God gave us a guarantee there's going to be a judgment. He 
if I'm in Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17 and verse number 31. Then I'm going to need Romans chapter 14, verse number 10. Romans 14, verse number 12. Then 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 10. And we will see what the Bible says tonight. I want you to understand there will be a judgment. Because first of all, it is, it is I, because God gave us a guarantee. How, how, what was the guarantee? He tells us. Acts 17, verse number 30 and 31. What does the Bible say? Because he had the point of the no, day. No, 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 brother. Go ahead, verse number 30. Oh, yeah, you trying to help me. We go to verse number 30. You know, In the time. Yeah, oh, I know sometimes brothers trying to help me, but I know I got this. I got look, I got this tonight. And I was at the time of this ignorance. God he read that. But now, but now, all men commanded all men everywhere to repent. To repent. Come on. Because he had the point of the Why should you repent? Why should you turn to God? Judgment. 
And so quickly tonight, uh, in regards to the fact that we're going to be judged, and the Bible says we'll be judged according to our work. You're going to please ask the state chapter 12. Chapter 12. And let's look at verse 14. Please ask the 12. Verse 14. The Bible helps us understand our church and we're going to be judged. The things we've done in this life, we are going to be judged. Amen. And the book says, please ask 12, 14. For God shall bring every work into the judgment. God is going to bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Well, I'm talking about every secret. I'm talking about stuff mama don't even know about. With every secret thing. Whether it be good. Whether it's good. Or whether it be The Bible says whether it's good or, or whether it, it, it be evil. The Bible says everything, church, is coming into judgment. Amen. And we got to the Bible says he going to judge us. Our words give me Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And let's get Matthew 12 quickly in verse 36. And I need mean Mark chapter 4 and verse number 22. And Mark chapter 12, Matthew 12, 36, and Mark 4, 22. Watch what the Bible says. If you have it, watch what the book says. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word, every idle word that men shall speak, that men shall speak, they shall give account. Let me tell you, you better be careful what you're saying. In the day of judgment. You got some folks. Amen. We're going to be reminded 
of the time we had a chance. And look how awesome God is. God wakes us up in the morning. Yeah. And let me tell you this. Every time God wakes us up, that's God giving us another chance. Yeah. Right. We talk about this. People are dying every day. And we talk about this. Not the same folk dying. People are dying every day. But God allows us to stay here. So is that God gives us another opportunity. Amen. That's the awesomeness of God. Yes. Giving us a chance. Giving us an opportunity to get ourselves right with Him. But if you fail to obey God, it's written in the book of remembrance. But then now when I go to Psalm 56 and verse number 8. In Psalm 56 and verse number 8. Let's look at what the Bible says. Psalm 56 and verse number 8. Let's watch what the Bible says. Psalm 56 and verse number 8. If you have it, watch what the book says. Thou tellest my wonder. Thou tellest my wonder. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. And they are not in thy book. Are my tears. Are they not in thy book? He says God has a book. Amen. About tears is interesting to me. <laughs> because when you cry, God knows about it. Remember now, this is both the good and the bad. There's not only tears you shed, but there's also tears you cause others Amen. to shed. And, and so, and, and you know, and, and, and young folks, you gotta be careful how life is, because life is of such where I come out here to take you, you're gonna reap what you sow. So you better be careful. You know, it's amazing. You have some young folk, they wanna sow their wild oats, they wanna be grown. You will be careful, because I'm telling you, young folk, the best you'll ever have it is right now, we're at home with mom and dad. You will never have it that good again. I mean, when somebody else is paying the bills, I mean, you got a room, you're staying there free. I tell you, you will never have, oh, you better stay home as long as you can. I'm trying to tell you, you will never have it that good again. You got these young folk there, they're in a hurry, always in a hurry, always in rushing, always rushing to do stuff. But I come out here and tell you,
there's a book of tears. Be careful, be careful. God knows, God knows. God knows what you're going through. Read Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse number 16. Psalm 139 and verse number 16. Listen, God knows. God, God knows what you're going through. He knows, he knows what you're going through tonight. And the Bible says there's something else I'm going to show you. The Bible says in Psalm 139, verse number 16. The eyes didn't see my substance. The eyes didn't see my substance. Yet being un unperfect. Being unperfect. And in the book all my members were written. And written. God has a book of members. God, listen, God has a book of members. Amen. What are members? Give me Romans 12 and verse number 4. Romans chapter 12, verse number 4. God has a book of members. God has a book of members. What's, what, what is that about? Well, the Bible says it uh, to us in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12, and verse number 4. Listen to the Bible. For as we have many members in the Bible says, watch this now. We have many members in one body. Which means God has a book. How would God has a book of your members? Because you know how on Sunday morning you miss church? Because you say, you know, my back was hurting, I had this tricky knee. And so therefore, you you know, you can't come to church with that bad back and that tricky knee. But then on Monday, both you and that bad back and that tricky knee go to work. God said, I got a book of your members. The excuses you use not to do what I told you to do. God says, I got a book of I got a book. God said, and let me just tell you something about God. Job 16 and verse 19. Job 16 and verse number 19. When God takes record, God is a good record keeper. Look and listen to Job. Job 16 and verse number 19. Job 16. Also now behold. Also Job said, now behold. My witness is in heaven. And my record is on high. And my record is on high. He said, listen, God is keeping track of the stuff we're doing down here. Church, God has book of our works, things that we're doing. God has a book of remembrance. But we will remember that day. Amen. We will remember the stuff, the opportunities we had, and we walked away. And this is because very serious because the thing about death is we don't know where death is. Amen. You see, most of us have already made plans for tomorrow. Amen. And we might not even live throughout the night. Amen. But you realize, listen, God is good to us. There's a lot of folk laid down last night didn't get up this morning. Yeah, some of them got up and couldn't stay up. Well, but God watched over us yeah, yeah. and blessed us and brought us another day's journey. Yeah, yeah. That ought to be enough for somebody yeah, yeah. to say, you know what, I need to give my life to him. Yeah. Because he is worthy. Yeah. I say God is worthy. Yeah. He is worthy of our service and our sacrifice tonight. Yeah. And the Bible says, listen, now remember this now. You and I are going to be judged over here. These are books. He's going to judge the, the works we've done, the things that we've done. They can be judged according to, according to the word of God. The Bible tells us in John chapter 12, verse 48. In John 12, 48, Jesus said, He that rejected me and receiveth not my words, hath one that judge him. For the words I have spoken, the same words, go to judge us in the last day. All of this is going to be judged according to the words of Christ. We're going to be judged based upon what Jesus has told us. And then, my friend, let me just say this to you uh, real fast. That books, these are our books. We've got to make sure our books are right. Because if your books are right, then God does something. Yeah. He will add your name over here. Yeah. God adds your name over here. Yeah. The book of life is nothing but a book of names. Amen. Are you sure, Brother Pounds? I'm just as sure as I can be. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 3. Then I need Luke chapter 10 and verse number 17. Then I need Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 1. Let's look at what the Bible said. First of all, give him Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 3. Watch what the Bible said. Philippians 4 and verse number 3. Watch the Bible. Philippians 4 and verse number 3. Yes, come on. And I entreat thee also. That's what I'm looking for. I entreat thee also. True yoke fellow. True yoke fellow. Help those women which labored with me. Help those women which labored with me. Me in and the gospel. Come on. With Clement also. With Clement also. And with other my fellow laborers. Also my fellow laborers. Whose name whose are name in the book of life. Where are their names? In the book of life. You see the Bible says this is a book of names. Whenever we do what God told us to do, Amen. God adds our name to the book of 
of life. Yeah. All right. In order for your name, so you gotta understand how the judgment is gonna be. You're not gonna have a chance. Remember, the whole world gonna be judged. Yes, you never have time to sit there and plead your case. Amen. How God gonna judge everybody? Only thing God's gonna have to do in the judgment draw is very simple. When you stand there, He's gonna look for your name. That's it. Come on. That's if your name is not there, you're gonna be told apart from me. I never knew you. We got to get our name, church, in the book. Amen. We got to get our name. Get from me. Get from me. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Because Jesus sent 70 out on the limited commission. And when they came back, listen to what Jesus said. And the 70 returned, and the 70 returned, returned with joy. Saying, saying Lord, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Even the devils are subject unto us. Through thy name. Through, watch this now, through your name. Come on. And he said unto them. He said unto them. I beheld Satan as lightning I the hell Satan from heaven. As lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents. Jesus said, I give y'all power to tread on serpents. And scorpions. And scorpions. And over all power of the enemy. All power of the enemy. And nothing shall be any means hurt you. And nothing shall hurt you. Shall by any means hurt you. Come on. Notwithstanding. Watch this now. Rejoice. Notwithstanding. Y'all don't have to rejoice because of the power I gave you. That the spirits are subject unto you. Don't rejoice because the spirits are subject unto you. But rather rejoice. But rather rejoice. Because your name. Because your name. Are written in, are written in heaven. Amen. You can rejoice when you get your name. Yeah. You see, going to heaven, y'all, is like going to a fine restaurant, if you will. Your name has to be there before you get it. You can't go to heaven. If you haven't already made reservations, your name has to get there before you are there. And when you stand there, God just want to look for your name. No, no time to sit there and start begging. No time to sit there crying, asking for another chance. If your name is not there, it's going to be too late. Get from this Old Testament, Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. At verse number one. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number one. Daniel 12 and verse number one. Watch what the Bible says. And at that time shall Michael time. stand up. Shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of the people. Come on and read. And there shall be a time of trouble. There shall be a time such of trouble. as never was since there was a nation. Come on and read. Even to that same time. Come on and read. And at that time the people shall be delivered. Thy people shall be delivered. And one that shall be found written in the book. God has a people. Those who are written in the book. You got to get your name, church. That's what I'm saying tonight. Amen. You and I got to make sure our name is in the book. Amen. And I remember we read in Revelation uh, 20 uh, where John the Revelator was telling us uh, in regards to the fact John says that everybody's going to be judged. Yes, We're going to be judged out of the books. Amen. Out of Revelation 3, verse 5. Revelation 3, verse number 5. Watch what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 5. Watch what the book says. We're going to be judged, church. John says that there's coming a judgment. Watch what the book says. He that overcometh. Watch it now. He that overcometh. The same shall be clearer than white rain. Now watch the book now. He that overcometh. The same shall be clothed in white rain. And I will not blot out his name. And I, I'm coming back there. Amen. And I will not blot out his name. Out of the book of life. I watch his name. I won't blot it. Take it out of the book of life. Come on. But I will. But I will confess his name before my father. Before my father. And before his angel. Now, now let me just say this to you. In Revelation 3 5, the Bible tells us that when you see it, yeah. God will block your name out of the book. When you see it, you mess up your books. Yeah. And when you mess up your books, God takes your name yeah. out of the book of life. Yeah. Now, I know that's right. That's true. Yeah. Look at the Bible. Get from me Psalm 69, verse 28. And then get from me Exodus 32 and verse number 32. All right? Psalm 69 and verse number 28. Psalm 69 and verse number 28. Watch what the Bible says. Psalm 69, 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. And not be written. And not be written with the right. The Bible says, listen, God will, if you 
to sin against God. He will blind out or take your name out of the book of life. And you will not be written with the righteous. But why is that? Sin. Sin is the thing. Sin is the thing that separates us from God. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2. Sin separates us from God. And because of sin, church, it messes up our books. All the good you've done, if they're sinning, let you just mess up your books. Amen. And when we mess up our books, God takes our name out of the book of life. Listen to Moses. Exodus 32, verse 32. Exodus 32 and verse 32. Listen to Moses. Watch what the Bible says. Exodus 32 and verse 32. Yet now, yet now, if thou will forgive their sin, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, and if you don't forgive their Block me, I pray. He said, then block me out of, out of the book of out of, out of thy book. Out of your book which thou hast written. Lord, would you have written? God has a book tonight, church. Yes. God has a book of our names. Yes. And, and, and then the awesome thing about this, if, if you're a member of the church, because your name could have been added to the book. When, when you're baptized, and I'll show you that in just a moment, when you're baptized for sin's remission, when you come to the Lord's church, not only does the Lord forgive you, yeah. not only does the Lord add you to the church, not only does he give you his Holy Spirit, but something else, he adds your name to the book of life. Yeah. And members of the church, listen to me, when you sin, when Christians sin, what happens, God will take your name out of the book. Yes, because your books are all messed up. Amen. But the awesome thing about God is, if you would just repent, whenever we Whenever we get ourselves right with God, God says, I know sins, I will remember them no more. God has a process by which he remembers no more of the sin. And when God doesn't remember the sin no more, but God does through his wholesomeness, he will add our books are therefore cleaned up because of repentance, and then God adds our name back to the book of life. That's how awesome God is tonight. And then listen, I need you to understand this. Because I need you to, this, this is the the pivotal point of the lesson. When you come down to the church, I need you to understand this. The Bible makes a clear distinction between those in the Lord's church and those who are not in the Lord's church. The Bible makes a clear distinction between, it says, us and them. Get from me first, Peter 4 and verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 15. Watch what the Bible says. 1 Peter 4 and verse number 15. Watch what the book says. 1 Peter 4 15 says what? But let, but let, none, of but you let none of you Watch this. Don't miss this. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. As a murderer. Or as a thief. Now, when it says murder, it's not necessarily talking about taking someone's life. Right. Because you can gossip and kill somebody's reputation. Yeah. And you're a murderer. John said, if you hate your brother, yeah. you're a murderer. Yeah. So you got to be careful. We talked about that before. Be careful what you say. Yes, sir. Amen. Murderer, come on, sir. Or as a thief. Oh my God, a thief. Or and I ain't talking about somebody who just break in and steal all the whole stuff. You can steal credit that belongs to somebody else. Amen. You're a thief. And then we have some folk in the church. Yeah. 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 We got some folk in the church that steal stuff. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because when he mentioned this word thief, it also
She was um, with her husband, but she had his friend, his best friend from school. And his best friend from school, school she wasn't married. And, and she, one day she started talking to her friend that was married about her husband. She said, you know what, you don't know him like I know. Girl, you better keep your eye on him. And so she started planting seeds in that girl's head. And all of a sudden that girl started looking at her own husband different. And she was saying stuff, and, and she sitting there believing it. And after a while, she cast out her own mind. It caused friction in that relationship. And after a while, one thing led to another. Problem on top of problem. After a while, the girl got mad. And, and think of girls I tell her, I saw your husband here. And he was with this girl. And, and so she would confront him about all this innocent stuff. Evidently, but she went home mad about it. And, and I told y'all before, don't ever get mad when somebody talking to your husband. Amen. Everybody don't want your husband. She was going to move a few blocks to go back home with mama. And so she moved, she moved. She moved out of the house, moved back home with mama. And a few weeks later, she said, about two weeks, she said, I know he got to be lonely. I need everything for him. I know he got to be just invisible. And so she said, I'm going to ride by the house. Just to see how miserable he really is. And when she rode by, y'all would never guess who was in the yard running the ground. You gotta learn how to watch football. 
You would never understand a man. Can y'all hear me? You would never understand a man unless you understand football. You gotta understand football. Now, now, now. When you see football, it's very interesting because when you look, there's there's a, a, a team that has the ball. It's 11 of those guys. They dress the lot. But I want you to pay attention to the running back. He's the guy that usually all the way in the back. And he always, he's the one that usually carries the ball a lot. You gotta keep your eye on him, he's gonna have the ball. Now he got he, he has one uniform, he got ten other guys dressed just like him. Those are his friends. Now on the other side, it's called the defense. They are dressed different than he is. He's eleven of those guys too. Now you gotta understand that those are the haters. Now the job of the friends is to block the haters so the haters don't get to him. Now you watch the running back. When the running back got the ball, watch the running back. When he carries the ball, he'll carry the ball on time with two hands. He don't want to fumble that ball. Because if he fumble that ball, he knows he got to go to the sideline. DJ and Enrique, he can't play for a while, so he don't want to fumble the ball. That ball is very valuable to him, so he carries it real carefully. When a defender, when a heels come toward him, he'll hold it real tight. Because he don't want nobody to take the ball out of his hand. But you notice that same guy, after he scores, Judgment gonna start with 
the church. And then watch what he said. You'll make a distinction between the church and those outside the church. Watch the book. Let it read. And if it first began at us. If it first began at us. Come on, sir. What shall the end be of them that obey what? the gospel? Shall the end God? be of them? Those who are in the Lord's house. Those who wear the name of Christ. Those who are glorifying God. Peter says, those are us. But it says the them are those individuals who are outside the house. Don't glorify God and are not Christians. What shall be the end of them? There's a difference between us and them. I know that's right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse number 7. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse number 7. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse number 7. Watch what the Bible says. And to you who are and to you who are trouble, rest with us. Watch this now. Rest with us. Who are the us? In the house. Christians who glorify God. You who are trouble, rest with us. Come on, read, sir. When the Lord of Jesus, when the Lord of Jesus shall be revealed from heaven, heaven with this mother and his mighty angel. In flame and fire. In flame and fire. Take revenge on them. Taking vengeance on them. Those who are in the house, where the name Christian, they glorify God. Those who are not in the house, the Bible says they don't know God. And they have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible makes a distinction between 1 Corinthians 1.18. The Bible makes a distinction between us and them. Listen to the Bible. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. What does the Bible say? First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 18. But the preaching of the cross. The, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. But then watch this now. You don't want to be with them tonight. Amen. But right, so the preaching of the cross is to them that perish Foolish. foolishness. But unto us, but unto us which us, are saved, which are saved the power of God. Those in the house, those who are Christian, those who glorify God, the Bible says those are the ones who are saved. As I try to bring this message to a close tonight. The Bible tells us, go to Colossians 1.15. Go to Colossians 1.15. In Colossians 1.15, as we close this message tonight, does the church matter? That's my, bill, my last one. Does the church matter? Does the church matter? Colossians 1.15, the Bible says, Who is the image of the invisible God? I put it on the read all this. I certainly don't just see this. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Now, talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus is the firstborn of every creature. Amen. You don't miss this now. You miss, don't miss the whole lesson. Jesus is the firstborn. He got up first, and through him getting up first, now we follow him. We will follow us of Jesus Christ. We will follow. The Bible talks about the first fruit. James 1 18, we're first of the first fruits. The Bible tells us that Christ is the firstborn. Because he's the firstborn, he allows us to be the firstborn ones. <coughs> Drop down to verse 18. Colossians and he Christ. is the head of the body. The Talk about Christ. He is the head of the body. The church. The church. Who is the beginning? Christ is the beginning. The firstborn from the Christ. Day. Don't miss this now. Christ Amen. is the firstborn. Amen. Don't, don't miss this church. Christ is the firstborn. That in all now, things, that, that's all I need to bear. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I'm marinate in mind. That Christ is the firstborn. Amen. Revelation 1 5. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. What's the Bible say? Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ who is the first of the witness, and the first begotten, first begotten, firstborn, first, that's all I need. First begotten, firstborn. Christ is the firstborn. Christ is the firstborn and allows us to be the firstborn one. Why is that important? I'm going to show you in just a moment why that's important. Firstborn, firstborn. Remember this now. Let's review quickly. God will judge us. Each one of us have books. Amen. Every one of us have books. God is the record keeper to our books. Job said, my witness in heaven, my record on high. Now, there is a one book, and it's a book of life where our names are in that book. I named it in that book. So many scriptures I, I, I left off tonight. Revelation 13. I should have went there. So Revelation 13 with a difference of time. Um, try to help us to see this tonight. But I want you to see this. 
in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22. Go to Hebrews 12 and verse number 22. Christ is the firstborn, allowing us to be the firstborn ones. The Bible says, I want to know who's going to heaven. That's the question tonight. Does the church, you're in, does the church matter when it comes down to heaven? Now remember this, you can't go to heaven if your name is not already written in heaven. Amen. You gotta have your name written in heaven to go to heaven. Now the Bible says in Hebrews 12 and verse number 22, what's what the Bible says? But ye are come unto Mount Zion. You are coming to Mount Zion. And unto the city of city the living God. Of the living God. Come on. The heavenly Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of, of angels. angels. To the general assembly. Watch this now. And church of the first He's talking. Hold on, stop my brother. He's talking about the church Amen. of the firstborn. Is that, is that heavenly Jerusalem yes. is a company of innumerable angels. He said this is a church of the firstborn. We talk about the church of Christ. What about those in the church of Christ? What does the Bible say? Which are written in heaven. Look, that's all I need. The Bible says those in the church of Christ, their names are written. Amen. They are written in heaven. I don't know about y'all. I'm going to stay in the church. Lord, do what y'all want to do. I'm going to stay in the church. But the Bible says that the church of the firstborn, their names are written. They are written in heaven. Yes, My friend, if you want to go to heaven tonight, that ought to be all of our plea tonight that we want to go to heaven. Yes. And I friend, what we've been trying to do this week is trying to help people understand what we show you this week is the Bible, God's Word. Amen. This is what it's all about. It's all about whether or not, my friend, we have a way. Because the Bible tells us now, it's the words of Christ yes, yes. that will judge us in the last days. And we start off this lesson talking about what John tried to help us to see. And John was saying that we're going to be judged out of those things that were written in the book. And listen, you can't go to heaven if your name is not there. Yeah. Revelation 21, verse number 23. I said I was, I was through. But I'm almost there. Revelation 21, and verse number 23. I want you to see through fast. Because who's going to heaven? You have to be in the church of the first fall. Because the Bible said their names are written in heaven. Revelation 21, 23, the Bible says what? And the city had no need of the sun. Now, now, watch this now. The Bible said the city had no need of the sun. Neither no. of the moon. Didn't have need of a moon. To Come shine on. in it. To shine in it. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. It was the light. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Come on. And the nations of them which are saved. Yeah. Shall walk in the light. The, the light. Of the same of those who are going to walk in the light of their God. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory. They're going to bring their glory and honor and unto, honor it. unto it. And the gates of it shall not be shut. The Bible all said, day. The gates shall not be shut to the city. Come on. But there shall be no night then. No night in this city. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Come on and read. And there shall in no wise enter can't go into in, it into it, it anything that defileth that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination anything that worketh abomination or maketh a lie or maketh a lie but they which are written in the Lamb who's going to heaven they that names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I think you gotta get your name tonight. You gotta get your name in the Lamb's book of life. If you want to be saved tonight, yeah, but better sign me up for that Christian Jubilee. I want to be in that number. And for me to be in that number, I got to stay in the Lord's church. Thank God for the church of Christ. The church, I tell you, the church of Christ, eh? Uh -huh, yeah, I almost went there. Let me just go ahead and go to the church of Christ, eh? Of those who have been atoned for be the church of Christ is the bride and the body of Jesus Christ. See, the church of Christ are those who have been called D. The church of Christ are those who have been delivered. The church of Christ E, it is eternal in nature. The church of Christ F, it is the family of God. The church of Christ H, it is the household of faith. The church of Christ I, is where those who are included are incubated. The church of Christ J, it is the joy of heaven. K, is the kingdom 
of God's dear son. M, it is the Lamb's bride. M, it is the mystery revealed. N, it is a New Testament fulfillment o, of an Old Testament prophecy. P, it is the place of party. Q, it's where the quick and are quarantined. R, where the righteous are received. S, where the saved are set. T, it is the temple of God. U, it is the unity of the spirit. V, it is victory. W, it is the way. X, it is exalted above the hills. Y, it is Yahweh's son's pride. Z, and the Bible tells it is Zion. Zion, thank God for the church of Christ. I'm glad, A, at the age of 12. B, I was baptized. C, in the Christ. D, I was delivered. E, from my evil. F, I was forgiven. G, of my grief. H, he healed me. I, of my iniquity. J, I had joy unspeakable. K, I, I had kindness. L, and his love. M, I experienced his mercy. N, nobody could do me like Jesus. O, he opened up his arm. P, he pardoned me. Q, he quickened me. R, he revived me. S, he saved me. T, he transformed me. U, I'm united with Jesus Christ. V, I have the victory. W, I'm walking with him. X, my past is excluded. Y, I'm yoked up to Jesus. C, I'm on my way to Zion. A, all things may not be perfect. B, because of trial and pain. C, I'm going to continue with Thanksgiving. D, I will begin to blame. E, even though times get tough. F, fierce winds are going to blow. G, God is forever able. H, hold on to what you know. I, imagine life without his love. J, joy will cease to be. K, keep thanking God for all things. L, that love imparts to me. M,
the same way he found yeah. I'm glad that he told love. Yeah. Go and rescue Pine yeah. over sin street. Yeah. And when love recognized that sin happened, That's it. I was I was tailored up, tied up in sin. And love said, I better go get some help. Yeah. Come on. So he went to the house of grace and mercy. Yeah. And when they pulled up on sin street, I was in the hands of justice. And justice wanted to cut me down. Stood over me with a knife. The wages of sin is death. But when love pulled up, he told grace and mercy, y'all gonna get out? I'm going to park the car. Mercy walked in first. By Jesus. J E S U S. The J is you need to hear just Jesus. Don't hear nobody else. Don't hear what mama said. Don't hear what daddy said. Don't hear nobody else. You need to hear just Jesus. And the E in Jesus is the evidence. The evidence is the fact that Jesus died. He was buried. He rose again. That's the evidence. First Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4, we call the evidence the gospel. And then the first essence, Jesus, you got to stop doing what you're doing. That's called repentance. Acts 17, verse 30. And then the you in Jesus is the ultimate. In Matthew 10, verse 32, 33, Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. But if you deny me before men, he said, I'll deny you before my Father, which is in heaven. That's the ultimate. And then the last S is you got to submit to submersion. you got to be baptized in water for sin remission. And what baptism does, it puts you into the Lord's church. It's going to put you, my friend, we talked about that night, you're going to be where the saved are. It's going to put you in the house. And Christ is the son over his own house. Hebrews 3, verse number 6. That's where you need to be tonight. Christ can't represent you, my friend, if you don't come. you got to come to him. you got to come to him tonight if you want to be saved. If you want, my friend, to recognize one of these old days, because all of us will leave here. We talk about this, we start off, the judgment is going to come. And think about the judgment, it's going to come without you ready for it or not. It's going to come. Now, and I'm just saying this tonight. If you're here tonight and you say, I'm not going to obey, but I hear the brother pounds, but I'm just not ready. I'm just not ready for the pounds. I just need to live right first. That doesn't make any sense. Amen. How are you going to live right and then become a Christian? That's just like saying, I'm not going to learn a word until I learn to sweat. No, that, that doesn't make any sense. No, no. You have to get in here. You have to get in. The Lord is going to help you once you get in here. He's going to help you. Then that's when you pray for the strength that you're going to need day by day. Amen. But if you don't listen to me, I'm not trying to scare nobody. I'm just going to remind you this. This lesson tonight has been recorded by God. 
in your book of remembrance. And if you don't obey the gospel, this lesson will come back up to you in the judgment. Amen. And you're going to remember. You're going to remember. And the thing about that, that rich man, he was locked in and he couldn't get up. And he just remembered. He remembered. He had an opportunity to get right. But he failed to do so. And I'm saying to you tonight, don't let this opportunity pass you by. God has been good to you. He's been good to you. It's time for you now to be good to him. Give him the body of Christ and you sin. You come on. I tell folks all the time, no shame in sin. It's sin. The shame comes when you sin and you fall. I say, no shame in sin, no shame in falling. No fact, I won't have sin. There's no shame in falling. But the shame comes when you fall and won't get back up again. But I'm saying to you, get yourself back up again. I told you on Sunday, don't worry about folks talking. Because if you worry about folks talking, that means they already talking. People don't talk. Lord knows they don't talk. I told you, if you talk about you, maybe you go crazy, then talk about you for going crazy. You can't worry about folks talking. You got to make up your mind tonight, I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ. I'm gonna, I tried everything else. I need to give the Lord a chance. That's what I'm saying to you now. Give the Lord a chance tonight. Whoever you are, listen, you have to do nothing. Everything is ready. The clothes are ready. The water is ready. The baptism are ready. So the water is ready. The clothes are ready. Everything is ready. Only the readiness is on your mouth. What I'm going to say to you tonight is, well, are you willing even tonight to say yes to Jesus? Now, how in the world can you say no to him? He said yes to you and die on that cross. Amen. You come on, my friend. Don't, don't turn your back on because then, with, with sad words, he might have to tell you the last day, depart from him. I never knew. That's the sad reality. So if you need Jesus now, we should come on right now. We're going to stand. We're going to sing a song. Come on to the Lord.